Okay, guys. Um, I wanted to show you something I've been working on um, uh, just as I get ready to do some sequencing, thinking about some challenges that I know I face as I, I work in the sequencer. Um, so this is my show. Let's just create a simple animation. Um, we'll throw a timing track in. Uh, we're not, we won't be very imaginative. We'll just make it a metronome with timing tracks every thousand seconds. Um, so one of the things that I know I happen, I get lost in my sequence. I got all my models open and everything else, and I, I'm going to drop a, an effect in here. And I'll, I'll then want to go off somewhere else and maybe grab something and copy and paste it in. Um, and then I spend all of my life scrolling around and everything else. So a couple of things that I've changed coming up in version 30. So first of all, page up and page down now work in the effects window. Um, you'll find in version 29, it switches between the tabs, which is not particularly useful. Um, the second thing that you can do here is I've added a hotkey uh, control uh, and the full stop. And when you press it, what it does is it remembers whereabouts in the sequence you are, exactly what time spent we're on. So we're slightly before 13 seconds and we're on ribbon um, bed front, but really front door sticks is the top row. And so if I move around here and back here and I press the control and the slash key, it takes me right back where it was. And if I decide to go up here and drop another effect, and decide I want to remember where this one is. That's cool. I press control dot again. It saves it. I can come back down here. There's my other effect. Yeah, but if I hit the control slash, I'm back again, back at the fire effect. Now it only remembers one at a time. Um, so, but it allows you to say, oh, look, I just need to duck off somewhere else in my sequence, grab something, bring it back and, and jump back to where you were without having to spend as much time scrolling. So I'm hoping that might save you a little bit of time when editing. A couple other things I've done. Um, uh, normally, of course, you're able to move an effect with the arrow key. You'd be reasonably familiar with that. A couple of extra left and right options. Um, if you hold the control and the shift key down and you press the right arrow, it will now stretch the effect out. Uh, because I'm in, um, in the timing effect mode, it will stretch it out um, one timing bar at a time. So left arrow stretches it to the left, right arrow stretches it to the right. And of course you can undo that as you would normally be able to do. Um, if you have another effect here, um, Again, uh, if you hold the control shift down, it will expand until it hits it and then it will stop expanding. It's actually pretty smart. Um, if you hit it there, it will join it up. Um, so it works reasonably easily. Um, if you turn off the timing marks and you select on the effect and you hit control shift and the right arrow, it will fill up to the next effect. If it happens to be on a line on its own, it will fill it up to the end of the sequence. If it's, uh, and if you hit control shift and the left arrow, it'll fill it up to the beginning of the sequence. So filling a sequence line precisely for the whole sequence is as simple as uh, dropping the effect, hitting control shift right arrow, control shift left arrow, and it's now done and it's precise, no more mucking around, trying to line it up and, and get it perfect. A um, Couple other things. Um, uh, this stuff works on selections, um, and in fact, it works in some interesting ways. So if you highlight two effects, hit Control Shift, right arrow, the first one I only went to um, the thing. If you hit Control, right arrow, it moves the effect. So rather than stretching the effect, it just moves the effect across as far as it can to the left or the right. Um, based on uh, holding the control key down and the left right arrows. So some simple ways to move around and a simple way to remember where you are in the sequence. 
Now, the other thing that often happens is you'll be uh, working in a sequence, you'll have a chorus, and you'll want to keep jumping back to the chorus or, or to some other part of the song. And obviously, you always had to zoom out, go back up, find that portion of the song, or move the scroll bar across until you found it. So what I've added is if you come up here to where the actual timing marks are, you can now right click up here and you have nine or actually 10 markers that you can put in place. So I can just select number five and it puts a marker five in. Over here I can put marker six. If I do marker five again, it obviously moves marker five from where it was over to there. If I come over here, I can put marker four. And what this means is if I'm zoomed in here and I press um, control five, it's going to move such that marker five here is at the left hand side of the screen. So you can just jump around between five and six and four because they're the markers that I've set. Very quickly jump to that section of the song. It doesn't change which model it's on, it just changes where in the song it is. Um, if you're a little bit too lazy for that and you want to um, just jump to the 10% mark, the 20% mark, that's cool. Uh, control shift and the one key takes you 10% of the way into the song. Two takes you 20% of the way. Three takes you 30% of the way. Four, 50, 40% and so on all the way up to nine, which takes you 90% of the way through the song. Um, and just moves everything around. So a couple of quick keyboard shortcuts coming in version 30 to make it a little bit easier to get around the sequencer quickly and spend a little bit less time uh, zooming and scrolling. Thanks guys.